Hey guys, it's me Minori and my pet Baymax. Welcome back to my channel. Oops. I'm sorry Baymax. Welcome back to my channel. Hi. So guys, I actually started TikTok. I know. Don't forget to follow me guys. Anyways, I only have one video up there, so I definitely need more videos. So I've been looking around TikTok for more ideas, and today I want to try out a few art techniques or hacks on TikTok and see if they work. And to be honest, they all look so interesting, so I'm just ready to try it out and have some fun. So yeah, let's just jump right in. I try some TikTok art hacks. Let's get started. So first off, I want to try something that's anime art related. I don't know if you guys seen it before, but I was so intrigued when I saw this clip where they color in this anime drawing with like water bubbles all over their hair. They kind of connect the waters with a brush and it all kind of like fuses in and makes this really beautiful gradient effect. Okay, so I have three drawings. I actually drew these two and this is from a children's book and I'm going to be trying it out with these drawings. By the way, I printed on a Copic paper, so it's not like normal paper. So for this project, I got some Copic refills. Yes, they aren't markers. So if you look from the side, you can tell that it's full with ink. I'm going to make small droplets all over with this ink and blend it out using this brush. Hopefully it works. I mean, I just really hope it works because none of the TikTok things comes with like instruction. So let's see if I'm doing it right. Which one should I start with? I kind of want to start with Ami. And um, I don't think this is necessary, but I don't want this to move. And normally I would probably like move it around without really thinking of anything. So I'm just going to stick it onto the table. I'm going to put some double-sided tape. Peel it off and put it in the center. Okay, I'm going to be using three different colors. I'm going to add the lighter colors on top and the darker colors on the bottom. And I'm going to be making small dots like so. Ooh, wait, it's like spreading so badly. Hmm, this might not be the right paper. I feel like I need something a little bit like glossy. Some kind of paper that won't soak up too fast. So I kind of want to try out this paper. Let's see if the dot stays put. Mmm. Okay, just a theory. It might not work with like alcohol markers. It may only work with like watercolors. Here's another different paper. No. Okay, so after some playing, I noticed that water works. Alcohol ink doesn't work. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to place it in the center. And I'm going to make some droplets using my brush. Oh, I was a little bit upset that my alcohol ink didn't work. I mean, I bought it for this video. I mean, it's okay. I'm definitely going to use those refills in the future, so it's all right. But still, I was a little bit upset. And here's all the small droplets. So now it's time to kind of blend them in. And hopefully it works as I imagined. So here we go. So guys, it's totally working. This was what I was going for. I just love looking at the water bubbles kind of like fusing in together. It's not that hard, but I had to be careful not to go over the lines. Okay, it actually works and it looks so beautiful. The only problem is you can kind of see like the dots. Next up, I'm going to color in Zen Itsu. Again, I'm just going to make some droplets. Oh no, it's kind of already soaking it up and making it look weird. So let's just like go right in. The blending doesn't look too bad. Again, you can kind of see the dots, the waters kind of blended out, and now it's kind of like looking fuzzy all over. So I feel like this was a fail and I want to try it again. Okay, I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm not going to talk because I think I need to do it like real fast. So after doing this a couple of times, I kind of noticed that the yellow one kept making the lines all fuzzy. I feel like it was the color because my other ones didn't act the same. I guess there's certain colors that work better than others. Okay, this was a fail and a success at the same time. I kind of went over the line. So let me try one last time. This time I made sure I stayed inside the lines. I also diluted the colors a lot more because I felt like something in the color yellow was making the lines all fuzzy, but it still didn't work that great. Okay, still not perfect, but I think it worked the best. I drew her in my 24 hours challenge video and I think I gave her like brown hair last time but this time I'm going to give her green hair. And again, here we go. 
<laughs> that was like too big. Okay. This one turned out the best in my opinion. I was also getting a lot better at making water droplets. I noticed that the fuller the droplets, the more satisfying it looks when blending them in. All you have to do is kind of like load up the water onto the brush and gently tap it off onto the paper. You can also build up the water bubble, so if it's like too small, you can add more on the same place. But you need to move real quick or the bubble's going to stain the paper. This TikTok hack looks so easy, but it's actually quite complicated. And there we have it. This technique is like not the best way to color hairs in any way, but it's just like so mesmerizing looking at the bubbles kind of pop and blend in together. It does give like a really cool watercolor effect. I mean the green one is looking so pretty. And I had a lot of fun so let's turn this into a TikTok video. Okay, so the first trick was kind of a fail. I mean, it technically still worked. Not the best way to color in here, but I think it still looked pretty. So let's move on to the second hack. For my second video, I wanna make a DIY poppet. There are just like so many ways to make poppet. I mean, I've seen people make them with like balloons, paper, but today I'm going to use something a little bit different. Okay, so here I have a white sponge and a clear case. I got this for like a dollar. What should I make? Ooh, how about like a bunny case? I think it's going to be so cute. So I'm just going to use a pen and outline the case. Something like this and add two little bunny ears on top. And now I'm just going to use a cutter and cut along the lines. I'm going to fix it up a little using some scissors. Hmm, so far so good. So now I'm just going to trace the camera hole. Not bad. And now this is where we use these googly eyes. These googly eyes are so fun to play with. And it feels exactly like a poppet. And makes these popping noises. So now I'm just going to peel them off one by one because they're like stickers, like so, and place them gently onto the sponge. And it looks something like this. <laughs> it looks so weird. I'm already loving how it feels. It does look a little bit weird, but don't worry, it's time to paint. I'm going to paint it half pink and half purple. So I'm just painting all over with fabric paint or puffy paint. You can't use acrylic paint because it's going to be all hard and will chip off after it dries. You want some kind of like malleable stretchy paint. You can also add some kind of top coat on top for protection. I didn't use any for mine and it still looks nice but I'm 100% sure it will last longer with a top coat. So it's semi dry. Let's go in for another layer. I think I did 3 coats all in total but you want to make it really opaque so the black eyes won't peek through. So now that it's dry, I'm going to glue it onto the phone case. And at the very end, I'm going to use a Posca paint pen and kind of outline it. This part is optional, but I thought it's going to look better. And there we have it, our very original poppet case. actually feels exactly like a puppet. So I think this is a total success. Okay, so for my last video, I actually went to Uniqlo and got a pair of jeans. This is going to be another anime art related video. So I've seen a lot of people put like manga panels on their clothing. I've seen some people put them on their like shirt, their jacket, and today I'm going to go with jeans. You guys know me, manga art is my speciality. So hopefully this turns out okay. Let's get started. 
So there are a few ways to do this project. The first way to do this project is to use like a Posca paint pen or a Sharpie and draw on the pants. The second way to do this project is to get one of these print sheets where you could print using your printer and iron it down. I feel like this is the easiest way to do it. And the third way, which is the way that I'm going to use, is to use these heat transfer vinyl rolls. So this is like a black sheet and I'm going to use my cutter machine to cut it into shape and heat press it onto the jeans. I feel like this way is the hardest. I mean, you need to have a cutter machine at home, but it's going to turn out like the best. It's going to hold up. It's going to look very clean and nice, but I've never tried this before. So let's see how it works. I'm going to need to draw some pictures first. Obviously, um, if you're not going to like sell it online, you could technically like scan from the mangas and use that to print on, but I just don't really like to do that. I just want to draw the mangas myself. And to make it extra even more fun, I'm thinking of drawing it with real manga supplies. Like this is a manga paper. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to make it a Rama style jeans. Do you guys know what Rama is? It's a fairly old manga, so I understand if you don't know it, but it's like one of the best mangas ever. Rama was actually my first ever manga that I ever had when I was like five. One day when I went to Japan. You know what? I'll tell you guys the story later. Let's just get to drawing. Roma and a Half is a manga by Rumiko Takahashi. It was actually my first manga ever along with Sailor Moon. I was like 5 years old and I was in Japan visiting my grandparents. I went to a bookstore and fell in love with the manga. When I told my parents, they actually bought me all 38 books, a complete set the next day because they thought it was a great way for me to learn Japanese. If you guys know me, I grew up in San Francisco since I was 2 years old. I only visited Japan every few years, so long story short, I am now bilingual thanks to Rama. I also fell so hard in love with Inuyasha when I was like 10. And that is also from Rumiko Takahashi. So yeah, I'm a huge Rumiko Takahashi fan. And if you know that manga, you would know that I'm actually not drawing the main characters. I love the main characters, but I think Shampoo is so cute. I used to hate Shampoo because I thought she was a bit annoying, but I mean, I was 5 years old back then, I just couldn't see her good side. She is so sexy, but also so strong and super attractive. She literally does not need a man to help her, and I dig that. After I knew what I wanted on my jeans, I took a picture and put it in my iPad. I kind of feel like I should have drawn it traditionally, since Rumiko Takahashi still draws traditionally, even today. Oh, by the way, guys, check out her newest manga, Mao. It's one of my favorite right now. Anyways, she still draws traditionally, which is amazing. Most manga artists draw digitally nowadays. Rama has a distinct style, which I love, but it was actually my first time drawing her, so I was kind of struggling a bit. I'm sorry if it doesn't look exactly like the real manga, but I think she turned out really cute. Okay, looking good, and I'm just going to save. Okay, let's try this heat transfer vinyl sheet. It's actually my first time using it, so I don't know how well it's gonna work. It was like $10. Hopefully, it works. I'm going to connect my cutter to the computer. And let's start a new project on Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to add that to my canvas. So here's my jeans, and I'm going to use my ruler to see how big I should make them. Maybe like 17 centimeters. So I'm just going to change the size. To 17 centimeters and make it on the mat. So here's my Cricut mat. Ooh. I'm just going to place it right onto the mat and just like stick it on. And I'm going to set it right here. And here we go. So um, I completely messed up. You're supposed to put the mat side up and mirror the image. Let me say it again. Don't forget to mirror the image guys. Okay, scratch that because I did it totally wrong and I need to do it all over it again. Okay, looking good. I'm going to peel it off. And now it's time to weed the vinyl. Weeding basically means peeling off the parts that you don't need. There's also like special tools for this part, but I'm just using things that I found at home. So please bear with me even if you think I'm doing it a little bit weird. I do want like a complete set of all those special tools, but um, I'm kind of out of budget since I'm planning on a lot more stuff in the future. And you know, I just needed to save a tad a bit. But it's honestly so satisfying looking at this part. 
Okay guys, I think it's looking really, really good. So now I'm going to get the jeans and place it. Oh wait, I forgot to weed out two more stuff. Okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm just going to place it onto the jeans like so. <gasps> wait, I forgot one more thing. You really need to be careful with weeding out all the parts. I'm going to get a little bit of cooking sheet and use my iron to heat it for like 20 to 30 seconds. I first used a cooking sheet for protection, but I soon noticed that you can use an iron right on top without the sheet. And let's peel. Okay, it's not coming off real nicely, so I'm going to heat it up for a little bit more. Okay, this part was not 20 to 30 seconds. It took about like 30 minutes, but it's probably because my iron is so small. I feel like this is the trickiest part. And honestly, if you mess this part up, you mess up the whole thing. And the reveal. And it's actually really, really pretty. So I think I'm going to do the same thing again and print out the panda and the pig onto here. I'm just going to cut away the excess so I could use this for a different project. <gasps> oh my gosh, I forgot to mirror it. But you know what guys, I feel like I actually like how it looks. Yeah, you know what, I'm going to keep it like this. But guys, don't forget to mirror it. And guys, this is how it turned out. Okay, so this is how it turned out. I've got a logo on this side and some manga panels on this side. I'm actually proud of myself, guys. It feels so smooth. It looks professional. It just turned out way better than I expected. Good job, Minori. So what do you guys think? I think they all turned out way better than expected. And if there's any other like art hacks that you guys want me to try, please comment below. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next video. Bye.